is in it are never needed. Thank you. Thank you, and I call John O'Dowd. Gormay uh, August can call you, and it's quite clearly uh, a very difficult time for our communities, our families, uh, and society. In normal times, I would be rising to speak against this legislation and how we're processing, as I suspect many in the chamber would be. This is not how we do business. This is not how we uh, should be doing legislation, but we're not in any way in normal times. I too am frightened. I'm six foot six and 18 stone on a good day. And I'm terrified of a virus I cannot see, um, I cannot hear, but I know it's everywhere around us. And I know it poses the greatest single threat to my family, my neighbours, uh, my community, and I mean my community, I mean all the people who live here, that we have ever faced in our lifetime, and will likely ever face in our lifetime. And those sentiments will be repeated time and time again across the chamber, and people will be quite sincere when they say that. But the unfortunate matter is this. There are people out there who are not listening. There are people out there who, either out of bravado or stupidity, ignorance or arrogance, are continuing to flout the advice that has been given to them to protect their own lives and the lives of those people around them. And when their loved ones are choking to death in an ICU unit, if they're lucky enough to get a ventilator, then it's too late to say, I'm sorry, or I didn't know, or I thought it would happen to someone else. It's far, far too late. Now's the time, and in fact, I think we're past the time, but we've we're on the right road now. Uh, we're on the right road now to help prevent many, many deaths. So again, I would appeal to, appeal to those people who are flouting the restrictions who are putting others in danger to stop it now before they are standing. And they won't be standing in the ICU unit because they'll have to stand outside. Their loved ones will die alone because they will not be allowed in to hold their hand or comfort them or be with them at their last moments. They will be stand their loved ones and the loved ones of others will die alone. So I appeal to them once again to do the right thing. And if they don't do the right thing, then enforce the legislation that is before us today. Uh, I was coming into the Assembly this morning, as, as we all have, and in my humble opinion, there's still far too much traffic on the road. There's far too many people about. That cannot be all essential workers. Now, many of those people in those vehicles may have be saying, well, my employer will not let me stay off work, will not allow, allow me to work from home. I say to those employers, you're putting the lives of your employees in grave danger if you do not if you do not allow those either to stop work or work from home. We will lose businesses as a result of this pandemic which is going around the world. We will lose jobs. We will lose livelihoods. All those can be rebuilt again. All those will receive support to be rebuilt again. The entire economy of the globe will have to be reshaped to rebuild an economy to create jobs. But we will not be able to bring one employee or one loved one back from the death they will face if we do not take the actions outlined or if employers do not take the actions that are outlined in this. In terms of the response, Ken Cordia, um, I just want to quote from the European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control on the 11th of March. The early Decisive, rapid, coordinated and comprehensive implementation of closures and quarantines is likely to be more effective in slowing the spread of the virus than a delayed implementation. As I said, there has been much said about delayed implementation, but we are where we are now and we are taking measures to do so. But the other measure we have to take is we have to test, test, test. We have to know where the virus is, who has the virus, and word is spreading. One of the concerns I have when I listen to the evening news or, or the broadcasts, when journalists, uh, who are, many of whom are, are doing a fine job at this time, uh, report the figures for that day. 
There's 20 new cases today. Or there's 15 new cases today. Uh, it doesn't reflect what is happening of the spread of this virus. The virus is out there. It's in every community, in every village, in every estate, in every town land. Uh, it's being spread by people who maybe don't know they have symptoms or careless people who have symptoms and are being out. So I think there, there needs to be a health warning with every time we announce the number of people who have confirmed cases. At the minute, it stands on the island of Ireland around 1,275. In the north here, I think it's around 148 at, at, at this stage. But as I say, that health news comes with a health warning. It does not reflect the spread of the virus. It does not reflect the danger that our communities face and our families face. What we need is more testing. And I welcome the Minister in, in his opening remarks said that we are moving uh, to a greater number of testing. But I still think we even need more than that. We need to be opening up testing centres. We need to be cooperating across the island of Ireland. We need to cooperate across these islands. We need to be cooperating across Europe because this virus knows no borders. So the, the response is commensurate to the crisis. Um, the response is needed. The legislation is needed. The way the legislation is being introduced is needed. And what is needed more than anything is for citizens to understand the danger they face. Uh, I'll end, I, just, I just want to, in terms of, of the amendment, Minister, the amendment to me is, is very far reaching uh, and it quite literally is a blank checkbook. Um, and that, the legislator in my head, alarm bells rings when I see things like this. But the, the alarm bell that's ringing in my head about the danger we face is much, much more louder. I just maybe in terms of his closing remarks, the, the, the minister might explain the rationale behind that amendment. I think I understand it, but I think it's just for the record it would be worth uh, putting that. And can I end then by just putting on ra record again our appreciation and indeed our admiration of all those who are working in our health service, whether they be a consultant or whether they be a cleaner, a catering staff or nurse or wh whatever they may be. I, we, we owe them a huge amount. And at the end of this process, we need to remember we owe them uh, a huge amount. We need to get them the proper equipment. And I, I welcome the fact that uh, quite quickly the O'Neill's factory was brought into play. That shows the thinking we need now. Uh, where, where, where ministers and the executive acted quickly. They, they, they've seen an opportunity, they've seen a solution, and they went after it, and they got it. I also want to congratulate and thank those who are working in the supermarkets and shops and producing food for us. Um, it, has to, it has to be nerve-wracking standing behind the counter, facing all those people coming, um, transacting money. and you know, you're, you're, They're placing themselves at risk for not great money either. So I think at the end of this process, we need to remember those people too, because there will be an end to this process, uh, and, and life will go back to normal again, as we're seeing in China, and hopefully the Chinese experience, what they have been through, will help uh, the Western world to move forward. There is hope at the end of this, and we need to remember those people who stood by us when we were there. But I'll end on this note. Uh, Anyone who is currently flouting the, the, the current restrictions or flouts the legislation, I want to see the full weight of the law used against them. And I hope and pray they don't be standing outside an ICU unit while their loved one chokes to death on it. So thank you very much. Thank you. And I call Colin McGrath, Chairperson of the Ex Executive Office Committee. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I rise today to speak.